The NBA season is heating up, and the coverage you need is on Odyssey. Go deeper with daily coverage for every team with the Locked On Podcast Network, plus local sports station pods for your team. Need NBA hot takes? Check out Heat Check with Trista Crick. If you live for the drama of the NBA, you're going to love this pod. Plus, turn the NBA season into money season with expert betting tips and analysis for your favorite BetQL talent on You Better You Bet, the daily tip, and more. Turn this NBA season into a slam dunk. Listen now on Odyssey. Hi, I'm Femi Redwood. I'm the host of a new podcast called Beyond Black History Month. I know, I know, I know you're tired of hearing the same Black History Month stories. So am I. This is different. We celebrate black excellence while having nuanced conversations about race. Beyond Black History Month is super inclusive and it's pretty dope. For real, for real. So subscribe. All right, welcome back to the Cook and Joe Show, Hour 2 of this Wednesday edition. Uh, Joe off today. Uh, I'm going to be joined in just a matter of seconds by Jay Caulfield of AT&T Sportsnet. Jay is brought to you by the Disc Institute of Pittsburgh. Can't wait to hear uh, what he has to say about that goal last night, about the Penguins' comeback win, and about how after 50 games, they're in first place. In the Metro Division, a three-point lead over Carolina, a four-point lead over the Rangers. Now, I do believe the Penguins have played a couple more games than their opponents, those opponents, but still, uh, considering the season started without Crosby coming back from wrist surgery, without Malkin coming back from knee surgery, uh, pretty impressive uh, uh, resume so far, 70 points. Uh, in 50 games, 32 to go. They, they, they've they sealed a playoff spot. Uh, there's no doubt about that for the 16th year in a row. The question now is, uh, can they finish atop of the standings? And still not healthy. I, I, they still miss Teddy Bluger. I think they may miss uh, Jason Zucker uh, uh, to a degree. Uh, it really doesn't finish much, but, you know, I, I like what he brings to the game. Uh so the trade deadline coming up in just a little more than a month on March uh, 21st. We'll see if the Penguins need to do anything. Uh, Casey DeSmith, I don't think, had a very good game last night. Uh, gave up uh, four goals on 27 shots. That's not a very good percentage. Now, Mike Sullivan said afterwards a very mis- misleading stat that he was good in the third period. We shall see. All right, Jay is on the Nemecolon Fan Hotline. And, Jay, good morning. We have a little better of a topic to talk to you about this week. I believe last week we were talking about uh, Brad Marchand and his attacks on uh, on, uh, Tristan Jari. we got a little happier topic today, don't we? Yeah, we do, Ron. It's a good day to talk after a win and everything that Sidney Crosby accomplished last night. uh, It's a good day to talk, yep. Well, let me get your initial reaction to it. I think all of us, you know, Sid has a pretty good sense of drama and, you know, what he's done to the Flyers over the years. His dislike for them is very obvious. Uh, We kind of felt like last night was going to be the night. When they went on that power play late in the first period, did you get that feeling, Jay, that maybe this was going to be the moment? Yeah, Yeah, I think, I mean, it was – it was kind of wild if you, if you think guys are always going to try and force something to somebody and the, the game was just playing itself out. And I thought he was going to take that shot earlier in the first period, you know, when he bumped it back. But here he gets to the power play, as you pointed out, Ron. And, and now I think once he got my opinion, once he got to the right side of the ice, uh, I think that's where, you know, he's going to get those different opportunities. And when they finally moved around the movement that they had on the power play, and he ended up on that right side. Um, I first thought Latang was going to go to him from the point, like with that deflection that he does, and they ended up getting, you know, I think I, I look like people would drift to him and then try to find Gensel. Then they come back to to Crosby from Malcolm was a, just a great way for it to happen. So great one, a great uh, great night. I think the building was uh, electric, if you will. And, and I think when the refs wanted to drop the puck, I think it made it even better because they just kind of wouldn't let them, let them do that. So it was a great, great night, great for a player individually and for the Penguins, another – I mean, the, Ron, you know, you've talked, you've covered it for so long, but the players that have come through here uh, in all sports, pretty amazing to see that. And, and I don't think there's a better or more well-spoken 
superstar athlete, then we watch Mario Lemieux, and then you have Sidney Crosby, two of the best uh, superstars that are so well-spoken, humble, and they go about their business. So it could happen to a better player, individual, and he works hard at his craft. That's why and, he's that, one of the reasons why he's that good. And it was nice that it happened in a win, man. I thought for sure they were headed to a defeat, 4-2, yeah. with like eight minutes left. And all of a sudden, they get a power yeah. play. Gensel scores, and 18 seconds later, Ruido, of all people, uh, gets his first uh, goal of the season. And, and, and afterwards, Chris Letang said everybody wanted to get it for Sid. Said you don't want to remember your 500th goal in a loss. What did you think, Jay, of the way the players all went out on the ice to surround him after that goal? Yeah, I thought that was just another piece that made it seem so special. I guess uh, it's not like there's – I don't know if there's – protocol for that i mean i mean they let them all i, I think it was great it's what the, the game should allow something that special and it's almost funny you know you, you look at all the records that are broken in the nfl over the years and the top Brady passing records or what uh drew Brees did in as far as you know his numbers and and then the game just kind of moved on quick i always thought there should have been just a little bit more and i think what playing with the players all jumping out there being a part of it uh i think he wouldn't i i guess he wouldn't want it any other way it was a great way for it to be at home, and players' reactions were outstanding, and it just made the, the night even better for involved with it. Jay, I think you scored, tell me, five NHL goals. Is that correct? Yeah. Can you yeah. imagine, yeah. put a finger? <laughs> no, I can't. Uh, five, no, okay. So you got, well, I don't know my percentages. That's, you know, you'd have to do that 100 more times in your career to match 500. Uh, can just just put it into perspective. Yeah, I like to think I, I like <laughs> I like to think five hundred in practice may over all the years. I mean, I mean to me it's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean forty six players. I mean in the NHL and and I think what what a key to that is is you know Ron. I mean everybody's expected their roles are what they are when you get into the game and what's expected of you is laid out for you or if you don't do it you're gone. Right. That's that's the way it is in the National Hockey League and other sports and and. When he comes in with all the heat on him and 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 what that's about, and and then and then carry it through, see it through, championships, Olympics, uh, you know the best player in the game, every year, year in and year out. That's when you know you've got somebody, and because there certainly are a lot of players that were projected and and couldn't accomplish that, and uh, he's done that under the watchful eye of everybody, really. I mean. I, there was one question asked last night, and it was early in the press conference, like, well, you know, how'd you feel with everybody looking at you? Well, my God, people have been staring at him since he was a kid, right? Every time he stepped on the ice, from every level that he went to. And he handled it with the grace and, and drive that he showed last night, you know, right? So players are, are born for this and, and bred for it. And, and um, to me, it's pretty amazing. It's an amazing feat when you look at all the players and what they've accomplished and uh, to be one of the best. And, and again, he's, he's seen it all through. And the championships are uh, what make it. That's why, you know, when we have this conversation about McDavid, you know, they, they need to win championships, the great players. because They accomplish everything else. The championships have to be a part of it for them. And uh, Sidney Crosby's accomplished all of it. You know, you bring up a great point, Jay. The pressure on that kid when he came into the league, obviously the ping-pong ball bouncing the Penguins away, and you saw it with Mario as well. I mean, now, Mario might have been a little bit more before social media, really, the, the, you know, the, the, yeah. the, the, the pressure Crosby face. But I go back to that, you know, the, the, the first second game in Philly. I guess he played in Philly once, and then the second game early on in November, Hatcher takes his teeth out. You could see them really almost yeah. trying to test him to see how he was going to respond, yeah. and then he scores that winning goal in overtime. I thought that was a hell of an answer to that test. Yeah, yeah, I felt like that. That's what I, you know, Ron. We each did a goal last time. What we thought you know, there's so many goals that he scored that are all unbelievable for the most part, and that's the one I chose. That one that you just described. I felt like that shows the, you know. Guts, uh, and there's other words I would use for it, but it's the, the drive. You know, you have a player with all that skill and drive, but he, he shows another side that's, uh, you know, they poked the they that first poked the barrel like Aaron Donald when they came up and uh, pushed him on the sidelines and put their hand in his face. Well, they poked the bear there in Los Angeles the other night, and 
in Philly that back to that date they were doing the same thing and Philly's lived to regret it ever since. And, uh, you know, even if you look at that, the, the fans across the hockey world admire everything that Sidney Crosby does because you see what he does. He doesn't do it. He does it with hard work. Uh, obviously, the skill level's off the charts, but he puts his time into it, and he gives it his all every night. Every night, he's worth the price of a mission every night. And how many players are out there that are worth that? I don't know. I don't know. Many, really, but he is. And uh, to carry out what he's done and see it through in the fashion that he did against the Flyers team, that for me, just a natural. There's a buzz in the building when the Flyers play here anyway. Uh, to have it happen in that, in that fashion was uh, even better. We're talking to Jay Caulfield of AT&T Sportsnet here on the Cook and Joe Show. All right, Jay, I wrote about this today asking how many more, how many more can he score and how many more would he have if he hadn't missed? He's missed 250 games in his career, Uh, 212 with injuries, illness, and then, uh, uh, you know, what, 36 more because of the NHL lockout. I think he missed 13 the one year because of COVID shortened the season. I mean, imagine even if he only missed 100 games instead of 250, how much better his numbers would be. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's. I think when you when you when you pick it down that way to run, I think there's nothing numbers when you put up the number and look what and I'm going to flip on one second. I'm going to say look at what Mario did. Look at the games. Pull up the the number of who, the quickest to 500 goals, and you're going to see that number. I think we showed it last night. What Mario scored 500 goals in game total. It's unbelievable what he did it in. Right. So I mean, when you when you when you look at all these what all about the, the, all the players deal with adversity all the time and certainly if you take the numbers you take 200 plus games and you know whatever, whatever divided by three seasons basically you know 40 more per season let's say if he's healthy and then i'm just putting a number on it so that's already you're looking at over 600 there i mean it's it's a rare again it's a rare feat he's in the way he's playing the game i mean you know selves in shape to the eighth degree uh, he never backs off his his passion. His world is hockey, and uh, it, you just maintain that. You just kind of carry on, and he's going to do his business. But there are also players that if they ever see their skills diminish, want a part of that, right, going forward. So we'll never know that. We'll not know that till it happens, right, Ron? We're just not going to know. But a player like that, they don't want to be playing the game when their skills diminish. Very few are like Brian Trache who can come in and, and, and assume a different role and be outstanding at it, right? I mean, very few are going to be like that. He is one unique brand. There's a guy that's, again, the most quiet superstar ever and what Brian Chachi accomplished, but very few are like that. So Sidney Crosby will we'll go as far as I believe he feels his talents are diminishing, in my opinion. Well, it, Jay, health being, go health, all being, everything being equal, everything being equal, everything being equal health-wise, a huge thing. But I think when a player feels his skills start to get away from him and he doesn't like – what he's feeling about his game, that's when players like that will walk away. Well, you know what? Well, uh, the years that really hurt me that he missed, he missed the 41 games in 10 and 11. That's when he was on pace yeah. for uh, – yeah. uh, he had 32 goals, 66 points. That was the Steckel hit, the Hedman hit. Then the next year he only played 22 yeah. games, missed 60 more. I, I mean, those were the prime years for him. And then the 12-13 yeah. – was the lockout where you know the teams only played forty eight yeah. games? That's what I mean about what he could well be over six hundred. No, no, no. I know that. I know that. But I think all players go through that. I mean, look at our, I mean, players are faced with that. Right. Not, not everybody has a clean slate. So all players. I mean, all things being equal, everybody would be. You know, if you took the prime years, I totally agree with you right on that. I mean, I'm agreeing, and at the same time, I'm saying. Just take nobody. Don't look any further than Mario. Just no different. I mean, the games he missed and how he played injured, never skating, blah, blah, go on and on and on, which we've done a, a lot. But that, to me, all the, the players are outstanding. Uh, the great players, when they can come back and do what they do, and I, and I agree, he was in his he was prime years, and what would that be like? Uh, it's, it's amazing. I think Ovechkin's the one guy that's kind of, he's escaped. You know, uh, for the game, knock on wood for the game. He's escaped that that big, big injury uh, that's taken him out for a season. You know what I mean? 
Hey, Jay, did you see last night on Sid's Magical Night, Ovechkin popped in two against Nashville. He got the 30, (laughs) 30 goals for the 16th time in his career. Now he's only uh, five behind Yager for third place all time. It's just unbelievable what that guy keeps doing. Yeah, he's a, I mean, the greatest goal scorer. He could end up being the greatest goal scorer numbers wise. He's the way he does it. He does it in all different ways too. He does right. right? It's not just that one timer from the half wall or on the flank. Uh, he does it every all, every which way, and he moves the puck around and shares it. So yeah, that's pretty amazing. It's great, but the game needs that. The game still needs those players have the personality that uh, that uh, the game that it needs it. It needs it right now when it's in this process of creating fans right so that's unbelievable but on the night where all those guys have through respect when they were showing highlights of uh Sidney Crosby scoring all these goals the, the whole flyer bench was everybody was watching I mean they all watched you know what was going on with that I mean it's there's across the league you got to hate playing against them but you gotta everybody has to admire every part of his game and what he does because it's it's in my opinion second to none Jay, I'm going to take a quick break. When we come back, I'm uh, going to talk a little more about the game last night itself and also ask you how long you think Sidney can go because I, I, I don't see him stopping okay. anytime soon as long as he has his health. Uh, we are just getting started with the great Jay Caulfield. How's your mental health? I'm listening with Shakira. You know, I think that with the pandemic and everything, we've learned to seize the moment, seize the day. And I feel that in a way that has changed us all, we have to live in the present. And I I picked up this new hobby. It just kind of forced me to be more outdoors and enjoy nature. And I discovered surfing and I completely got addicted to it. And it's never too late to learn a new skill. Explore more at imlistening.org. Restrictions are being relaxed. Mandates are being removed. County supervisor says it may be time to let people make their own decisions. But are we really out of the woods? We have to remember that this is a global thing. COVID-19 has changed our lives forever. And information is still the key to staying healthy. All of the times you've likely been exposed to the coronavirus. Get the Coronavirus Daily Podcast. One podcast with all the information you need. Get this Odyssey original podcast on odyssey.com, the Odyssey app, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Stitcher. And be sure to hit the subscribe button. Hi, I'm Trista Crick from BetQL. Trista Crick from BetMGM Tonight on BetQL. Wagertainment. It's finding the things that get people who don't care about betting into caring about betting. Whether that's a sexual innuendo or Tony Stark being actually a supervillain, that is wagertainment. All the insight you need to bet smarter is at BetQL.com. And listen to BetMGM Tonight with Ryan Horvath, Quentin Mayo, and Trista Crick. Streaming weekdays from 7 to 11 p.m. Eastern on Odyssey. 